I'd like to welcome you all to Working with Portraits, a webinar designed for to support the school annual online yearbook program. Our goal this afternoon will be to focus on the functions of the program associated with student portraits. Specifically, we'll be reviewing printing classes, uh, sheets, for other teachers to or parents to preview. Strategies for detecting duplicate images, correcting student names, categorizing students, and using the flow function to create portrait pages. This webinar will be approximately 30 minutes. So let's get started. First, we're going to start um, here in our image library. And we're going to get started by creating a printed class sheet. This sheet can be sent to uh, parents or, or to an assistant, to a teacher, uh, to anyone who is helping you work on the pages. This is a way for them to look at the names to see if who is in their class is correctly in their class. Um, if the names are spelled correctly, if an image is a duplicate, or if an image shouldn't be used at all. To do this, we click on a class here that we're going to be using uh, for this webinar. And we're going to come up here, here under categories, you can see the, the add a new folder, edit, move to 2024, which we will talk about in the next webinar. And this the one right here that we're currently going to talk about is the preview button. By clicking this, we get a window opening up here. It is a uh, PDF, and it will have a PDF of all the students and the teacher in the classroom. Here's what you can print off and send to the teacher. And here they can make notes um, like this, this student might be a duplicate, this student might be in another classroom, or the student's no longer in my class. Then, while that's sent out to being uh, looked at by the the teacher and all that, you can come up to our next thing we're going to talk about is um, editing the class list, and we're going to go over to coverage report. So we're going to click on create right here, and we're going to go down to coverage report. Now, here in Coverage Report, um, we have some different things that you can look at and do here. Um, one can be fixing, any, anytime you need to go in and start fixing names instead of trying to find the student in the classroom. Um, here you have all the names that have been entered into the, uh, into the system here. So here you can simply click on like Emily instead of a Y, let's say it's an IE. So by doing that and just clicking off of it, it is now changed not only here, but on her image as well. Um, here you can also click on this and say that maybe she's not a fifth grader, maybe she's a fourth grader. And that will change it uh, for her image as well. Also, what you can do is you can come up here to merge duplicates. So searching through this, you find different names, um, such as uh, different spellings or something like the, like the grade. This person doesn't have faculty, but this person does. So you have duplicate images or duplicate um, people. So you can come up here to check this, that you want to keep this one, and we want to merge with this one. So we can click that, come on down here to the bottom right hand corner. You're going to see apply changes. We're going to apply these changes, click OK, and then that person has now been merged. We're going to come back here to coverage report. Now, the next thing, um, a lot of uh, advisors like this uh, feature. Um, a lot of schools have a policy or a rule that they want all the students to be represented equally in the book um, as much as possible. So to see if a student has been, how many times they've been put in the book, uh, here you will see like the first two people right here at least once. You can actually click on this right here and click on it again. Uh, to make sure the little 
arrow at the end of book is pointing down, then you will see right here that you'll see that these people have been in the book at least once. And then you can always go through and see if there's any uh, zeros or like one and everybody else has like four or five. So you can try to put that person in the book as, uh, as many times as possible. All right, so now that we have our list back, we're going to go back to the image library. And we're going to make some changes uh, to this so classroom right here. So what we're going to do is we got the list back and we were told that we have uh, some images that are duplicates, namely these two images right here. So in order, we could one, click on an image and delete it, or we can click on this image, come up to uh, tag names, and then come up to details. And you'll see a second one here that says use portrait. We click the down arrow and we can select don't use. Apply changes, that way we can make sure that any change we make is stays, and click done. So here you're going to see that it says don't use right here. This will tell the system not to use this photo at all. You know, like completely ignore it. Um, you can also see like here we have two of the same picture, but these are twins. So they may have um, the same clothes. So that's one thing you need to look out for. Make sure that they're um, not twins. Other things you can see is if this student right here is a third grader, not a fifth grader, or not in this class, we can click and hold, drag this image over to the next class down. And you can hover over the name. You'll see this little bar show up right there with the word move. Then we can just let go. And here you will see that this student is now in this class. All right, then next, oh, it's loading, here we go, there we are. All right, so the other thing is might be, you have, I have retakes in your folder. So right here we have one that's, this. the parent doesn't want this one in there, they want this full uh, image right here. So we can click on this one again, we click on this little blue dot. We'll take us up to, and it will do the, the little blue dot right here. We'll do the same thing as tag names. So we can click on this one. We go up to details, use portrait. We're going to say don't use portrait. Apply changes and done. So in some cases, you may have a student who cannot have a photo in the yearbook, whether it's for uh, protective reasons or for legal reasons or for whatever reason it may be, we do have an option for that. So you can click on the, a student that shouldn't have their uh, image in the yearbook. We can go down to here to this little blue dot, click it. We can go up to details. Under used portrait, we can go over to don't you, uh, use no photo. This will use a default no photo within the system. And when we go to flow, we will actually show you what it looks like. So we can click that right here, apply changes and done. And then here it will just say no photo. So it'll just let you know that a default no photo will be used. So next we're going to talk about um, tagging an image and no photo. So we're going to go to, let's say this class has a student that just showed up. They don't have a photo. Um, it's after photo retakes and they're just brand new. So you want to get them into the yearbook, at least try to include them in this year's book. So we can use a no photo. So we're going to talk about two things in this folder right here. We're going to talk about tagging an image and uh, the use of a no photo. So you may have a folder like this with different uh, no photos in it. You can choose one. And then we're going to name this, uh, a, give it the student's name that's missing. 
Now, one very important thing that we're going to talk about here is how to break a tag and why that's important. So the reason why it's important is if we click this little uh, edit button right next to this name and try to give it a student's name, let's say, say we change that to first in name and we hit save and hit done. Here you're going to see yeah, let's bring that up. Here you're going to see that first it's been changed. All, every one of these no photos are now first name. And the reason why that's happened is because we didn't break the um, we didn't break the tag. To do that, it, you can come down here to this remove button. We're going to click. And that removes the tag. The tag is now broken. So whatever changes we make to this photo will not affect the rest of the photos. We can come up here to add. We can give it a name. And then we can hit save. Once we hit done, you will see that that no photo has, it looks like it's disappeared. It hasn't. It is simply moved down here. It's another thing we need to talk about. The uh, image library is alphabetical order. So if you change a name, especially a last name that began with an E to a, to a W, it will move in the uh, image library and it will become alphabetical order. So, um, so right here we have this image right here that we're going to move. So again, if we need another one, we come up here you see that the add button is grayed out that's because we need to break this tag once we break the tag this add button becomes clickable then we can click it give it a name and then hit save you'll see it didn't move because of course the letter m comes before the letter in so it stays in alphabetical order here we can click and hold this uh image that we this no photo that we need for this class here and then we can just move it let go yeah, we moves it out of this folder and into this folder and then we can see our no photo is right here next we're going to talk about the flow function so we're going to come up here to plan and then page ladder. Here from our page ladder, we're going to click onto a page. And the first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about uh, portrait uh, templates. So some of you may wish to use a template or may already have a template on your page. Um, to get a template, you come up here to designs. And then you can come up here to, if it's already on custom, you come down here to portrait. Click the down arrow on portrait. And here you will see like all portraits. Here you can look at every single one of these portraits that we have. If you hover over it, it will open up in a little display. You can also search by size. So if you want small photo, uh, or if you want a slightly larger uh, photo image. So there you can see the photos are slightly, the flow elements slightly larger. Or if you want, if you know the number, say it's about 45 people in a, that you need to flow. And here you can select between 4150. And it will give you different uh, designs. To put one of these templates on the page, you can simply click and hold, drag it over to the page. Now it's going to ask you this. This will pop up right here. This will ask you if you want to retain any information on there. That's if you have a yeah, I mean, background like already on the page. It's going to ask you, do you want to keep that background or do you want to 
get rid of everything on the page and start fresh. Um, so if we had a background that we already selected and already put on there, we can just say, yes, yes, keep everything on there. I'm just putting this extra. So here we go with the uh, flow element. Well, here we have a flow element on there and we have this template as well. Here we have some extra stuff that we can put on there. And you go ahead and there's nothing else here that can't. And then to look at the different picture sizes right here, we can click and hold and drag that on there. So you can see the difference between some of these are the six by 12 boxes versus just a regular, the number of students. So next we're going to talk about the flow element. Now here on this uh, page, uh, we're also going to talk about the uh, well, and, and I would you when we put a flow it. element on there, we get ready to flow, um, changing some of the things such as the font, the font coloring and everything. So to get a flow element, we're going to come over here to flow. And here under flow, you're going to see six uh, different selections right here. These are flow elements. You can click and hold one of these, bring it over here and let go. Now, real quick, before we move on, I uh, want to show you something here real quick. If you're looking on some of your pages and you see some of the boxes uh, lined up and they look like a flow element, but you're having trouble flowing into them, uh, I want to point out a difference here. One, here on the right, you're going to see this little, what looks like a little portrait of a mountain in the, in the sun right here. These are image frames. These are meant for candid images or images to be dragged and dropped into. Here on the left, when you click on this, and you're going to see a yellow dotted line all the way around it, and you're going to see inside this blue box a picture of a person. This is a flow element. This is made for the flowing process or the ability to flow images from uh, a folder into these with the names already attached. So if you see this one on a page on the right, if you see this one, it's not a flow element. You'll have to remove those and put a flow element on the page. So next to edit this flow element or to make this flow element fit to what we need. Um, Cause it could be, we don't need this many boxes. So when we click on this, we're gonna see this dotted yellow line that lets us know that we have selected it. And we're gonna see this little toolbar that appears right above the page. This toolbar right here allows us to change the font, uh, allows us to change the size of the uh, names. <laughs> Next is the color. And we're going to show, we'll talk about that here real quick. Here you can see like a purple background or a dark colored background, and you're going to see that the names are in black. So if you try to flow and the kids' names are going to be in black, the, the contrast, you're not going to see those names. So to change the color of the names, you simply just click the down arrow. Make sure that text fill is clicked. Then you can select any, any color that you want to help with that contrast. So you can actually see the names. Um, if you want, you can also add like a stroke style to the names. You don't have to. Oh. Let's do that. And do that. There we go. Next, we have right here. We have a, a stroke style. This is something that you can add before you put uh, any of the images in. And one thing to remember is before you flow, make any of these changes first, and then we'll show you what happens if you flow and there still needs to be uh, corrections made. Next, we can look and you'll see that there are, uh, we can make that border bigger or smaller. We can bold the names or italic, underline. 
We can use original lowercase or all uppercase. Choice is yours. Here's the delete button. And next, right here is the flow options right there in the middle. So if we click the, here, you're going to see all these different options for this flow element. Um, little tech tip here real quick. If you see this little thumbnail, if you click that, it makes this, you can move now move this so that it's not in the, sitting in the way. And when you're trying to work here on the left, you can actually grab it now and move it over and then work on the flow element on the, on the right, excuse me. So another thing we want to uncheck automatic and I'll show you why. Uh, when you start reducing the number of rows, you can see that the boxes stretch in order to stay within this uh, already done frame. Um, so they just so then you're going to have to re readjust like the height and the width and all that. To keep from doing that, all you have to do is uncheck automatic. So now when you reduce the number of rows, everything will just uh, move up or the number of columns. So now you don't have to uh, try to resize everything. Next, we have the portrait dimensions. Here you can change the width and the height. After a while, if you try to change the height, you're going to get this little error message and basically you cannot uh, move outside this blue line that's uh, in the middle of the page here. And if you're ever trying to change the width and it won't let you, you may need to like drop a, uh, there we go. Maybe you need to drop a row, or not a row, excuse me, a column and maybe add a row. And then you can, if you still can't, you may have to move in a little bit here, or you may have to come up a little bit and move. Uh, it move, it, it readjust all your height and width right here. Portrait spacing right here. You can see that we will adjust uh, the spacing in between all the photos, as well as your horizontal and as well as vertical. The name width will let you adjust how wide the names are so you can if you especially if you have longer names you may want to bump this up just a little bit uh, to adjust for those longer names next is the portrait shape you can easily change the shape do anything you want uh, you can stick with the rectangle and you can actually round off the corners a little bit so you can see you can actually round them off quite a bit Next is names options. Now, for any reason you want to change the position of the name, or if you just want to shut off the names altogether, um, you can do that right here. If you need to change this to the other side, but you don't want the names on the left, you can come over here to name position, click on here, and so you'll see names on left horizontal. We go down one to names on right horizontal. Click that, and it's now changed the names to the right. And we can now move this over here and proceed forward with the book. There we go. And lastly, uh, we'll talk about this real quick. Lastly is the expand flow. Um, I would say stay away from this because uh, what happens here is if you... If you expand the flow, it will turn it into this, uh, just like the ones on the right here. And then all these boxes become individual and all the names become one text blocks. And then if you move anything, you're gonna have to hit undo or try to readjust things. So try to, try to stay away from this one. So now that we're ready to flow a class in, we got everything set up, we got it ready, positioned everywhere we need to right here so now we can come over here under category we can select this staff name format we can select either our first name first middle last last first however you want to adjust the, the names next you're going to see number of images is 22 
number of float images is zero because we haven't flowed any. Number of images remaining is 22. Uh, keep an eye on this when you're flowing. Just make sure that you're not, uh, you don't have like one remaining or two remaining or something. Um, that way, you, you know, you don't you include everybody in the class. Next, you're going to see start on page four and stop on page four. That's what this means is you're starting on what page do you want to start it on and what page do you want to stop the flow on. Next, you're going to see that you have zero available positions. Um, this is telling you that the, if you see this right here, what uh, it's telling you is it doesn't recognize that you just put a flow element on there. What you have to do is come up here and either hit the save icon right here or come up to file and save. And just if you keep your eye on this right here or the uh, zero available positions, you'll see that it now turned into 36 available positions. That's because we have saved it. The system knows that we have made changes and it recognizes now that we've put a flow element on the page. Uh, we can go back through, make sure everything looks nice. And I know we're going to get an error message. Uh, so if I hit flow, here's one potential error message what we might get. It says that these element, uh, these names are untagged. So if you get that, that means one of these images may not have been tagged, and you'll have to go back through and tag the names. No. So let's use a class that already has. There we go. So let's use a class that already has all their names tagged. So once we're done, we can come over here. We can hit flow. And all the names right here will flow into there. For any reason we need to make any corrections, all we have to do is hit reset. And it will take all those images out and it will leave the leave the flow element just like it was when it was flowed. If for any reason you need to bring this box back, all you have to do is click, double click on the blue boxes, come up to this little eye in the upper right hand corner, click on it, you know, bring that box back. If you click off of it, you see that this box is now brought back. And let's make a quick change because there is something I want to show you here real quick. So here's the class that we have been working on and we made all the changes that we need to. And after we hit flow, here you're going to see that the we have the no photo and let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Here we have the systems no photo. Here we have the no photo that we put in. We also may see a few, a few errors on the page. Uh, if you're a school that wants to make sure the teacher is flowed first, here you'll see that the teacher is actually last. You also see that this uh, student right here is actually out of uh, alphabetical order. So what we need to do is we need to fix this. We can actually fix it over here on the side, this little circle with an eye on it. We can click that. We can go over to details and we'll see that, oh, type. This student was listed as a teacher instead of a student. So what we have to do is fix that, apply changes and hit done. Let's look at this student. Go to details. This student was also listed as a teacher. We can list them as a student. Apply changes and done. I'm going to down here all the way down to the bottom where this teacher is. Go to details and we'll see this person was, the teacher was uh, type other. There is a hierarchy here. Um, the teacher will flow first, followed by assistant, followed by student, and then other. So we can go teacher, apply changes, and done. We're going to reset. 
here you can already see on the left side here, these have already been changed. Reflow. And there we go. The teacher is now first. The student is back in alphabetical order. And this student is now back in alphabetical order. Then it always helps right before you leave everything, make sure everything is flowed correctly. There are no duplicates on the page. If there's any student that shouldn't be on the page, um, you can take this time to fix it now um, before you move on. Um, also, there are a few other things that you can do. Um, you can actually double click on the images right here. You will see a crop icon. You can click that. And if you need to move the image over or you can move it or if you need to move it in just a little bit more, you can do that. You can also move it up if you have enough room. Once you're done with that, you can click off of it, click off of it again, and you can crop your images uh, as you go. Now, at this time, if there are any questions, um, you can ask them either in chat or you can unmute yourself and ask them. All right, I want to thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Uh, the demonstration of the functions related to the creation of portrait pages should eliminate some of the trial and error that occur when working with your yearbook. Uh, printing portrait sheets and editing class data ahead of time should result in better accuracy in some of the most important pages of a yearbook. Feel free to join us next time in creating activity pages and candid pages. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. If you have any questions, you can email or call and we can answer them. Uh, if you need any further assistance, we also have a YouTube channel that has uh, some little tech tips as well as previous webinars that you can always view there too.